of the following program which may be exceedingly distasteful to the more intelligent and uh, fastidious among you. We thought we'd uh, throw this disclaimer in. And, uh, yeah, yeah, you can't be too careful these days. Almost everything is adulterated, right? And uh, tonight's uh, program, however, uh, deals with uh, an emerging phenomenon which uh, we must take cognizance of from time to time, and that's the uh, evolution of the state of New Jersey. And I would like to salute tonight uh, Jersey. Uh, a, a typical aesthetic problem in Jersey has just surfaced, for those of you who don't know much about it. Have you followed the Fat Mary controversy? Well, you don't know the controversy of Fat Mary? Well, for those of you out of town, this is a classic confrontation between the forces of good and evil in Jersey, the forces of, uh, of art and the slob world are always coming into great conflict openly in Jersey. You don't see it like this in other states. And so here we have uh, from the uh, Newark Star-Ledger, I am quoting a, uh, a, a piece that uh, in a sense is the quintessence of Jersey life. Members of Bloomfield, that's a town in Jersey for those of you who don't know this, members of Bloomfield's clergy are waging a campaign against the name Fat Mary's by a local bar and restaurant housed in a 300-year-old building that once served as the headquarters of the town's Presbyterian Church. Well, the Reverend uh, Merle Irwin of the Bloomfield Presbyterian Church on the Green has asked the Bloomfield Town Council not to renew the liquor license. The campaign against Fat Mary's was launched last month by a group of reverends and... Uh, <laughs> not only that, it says there is a, is a regulation for forbidding a tavern to use the name of a biblical character. And so it says that uh, Fat Mary it not only uh, inflames the aesthetics of the theologians around, but also this place, the building, is over 300 years old and once was George Washington's headquarters. And now it's Fat Mary's Bar and Grill. In fact, they have a big sign that says Booze and Bites. <laughs> oh, that's Jersey. That's Jersey. Vitality. I mean, there's a certain slob vitality to that. So we would like to salute Jersey tonight. It's done it again. W, 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 somebody stop me. Oh, uh, W, 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 if you can stop me. Oh, uh. 1440 Broadway. Seven on your dial. That powerful, powerful station. With a 50 kilowatt smile. And uh, there's all kinds of uh, Jersey legends that I'd like to... Uh, I'd like to tonight. This is a show about Jersey, both pro and con. Remember, I'm not anti I like this vitality. Uh, there are those who feel that Shepherd is against the slob. Not at all. I think the slob gives spice and the piquant, uh, just just the piquant savoring of of, uh, of life. A slob in any crowd is that little extra spice that adds to. Oh yes, the the natural. The natural habitat of the of the Jersey slob is either in two guys when they're having a lawn sale, or or standing in line at the Dairy Queen. This is a, these are the two places he he seems to function even better even better than generally if you go into a, a Jersey body shop. You see a lot of good walking around slobs in a Jersey body shop. You know, <laughs> hey, what a rap you got there, Roy one. Huh? <laughs> Wow, that's going to cost all state, right, huh, buddy? Huh? Back into a hybrid, huh? You got a smooth flow? Well, uh, this is a typical Jersey discussion. <laughs> Which, by the way, that's a quote of an actual one that I heard one night. Oh, wow. So, uh, I, I, uh, I like Jersey. I love the Leaning Tower of Pizza at Twilight. 
there's a certain uh, uninhibited slobism about that that I just love. Uh, there's uh, and the motel reaches its greatest uh, greatest uh, flowering uh, along mm, Route 206. You see some goodies. Uh, 46 has got some great ones. Yes, uh, the Haven of Golden Dreams Motel is on Route 46. Three little sad shacks in a row in the weeds. <laughs> hard to buy. Hard, right next to the Carvel, and on the other side is a McDonald's. A place to spend those contemplative hours. Yes, the haven of golden dreams. Well, uh, this, uh, you know, this is part of, of, of Jersey life. And tonight, uh, I thought that uh, I might report to you something which uh, may have escaped uh, those of you that are students of Jerseyana. Uh, but there has been a resurgence, a little more of that mysterious music now, that tape. That's it. Aha. Uh -huh. Jersey has something that no other state has. And it gives a certain undercurrent to Jersey life. Jersey is the only state which is the known habitat of the Jersey Devil. <laughs> I suppose you thought the Jersey Devil was any any one of seven mafia leaders. Oh, no. <laughs> This controversy has raged endlessly. The controversy of the Jersey Devil. And uh, hold it there. Hold it there. Just keep that in, in the check there. Because we are going to tonight. As I said, uh, you better put the kids to bed because this is a bad show tonight. Now, are you curious? No, you have heard of the Jersey Devil? You haven't? I can't believe it. You've never heard of the Jersey Devil? And you live in Jersey? Well, I don't know what part of Jersey you've been living in, friend. What hole that you've dug and you pulled it in after you. But the Jersey Devil is one of the most persistent and consistent and scary legends of New Jersey. The Jersey Devil has been seen again. For those of you who wonder why the hell I'm bringing it up now, the Jersey Devil has not only been seen but was reported by at least a dozen reputable witnesses. Now, I don't know what a reputable witness is when it comes to testifying about the Jersey Devil. It's very hard to find a reputable witness in Jersey for anything. And if you don't think that's true, you ought to ask your local DA. But, uh... <laughs> oh, yes, many a reputable witness in the past has wound up dressed in a concrete overcoat at the bottom of the Raritan River. So it's not easy to find a reputable witness in Jersey. <laughs> oh, Jersey, oh, thou gutty state. Oh, Jersey, thy state of human yeast. Oh, Jersey, thy moiling state of incessant activity and unbelievable slobs. Oh, Jersey, thy great state stands as a legend. In fact, I think Jersey itself is, a, is, a, is the most American of states. A number of reasons. It has practically everything in it. Yeah, on the one hand, Jersey is a beautiful state in certain isolated areas. Yes, that's quite right. That's, it is. I mean, uh, physically beautiful in certain areas. On the other hand, you have areas of Jersey which are incredibly ugly. I don't know whether you have driven under the high, bristling, grayish sun of a typical Jersey day on the Jersey Turnpike along about exit 12 and exit 13. You see nothing but what looks like a moon, a lunar landscape that is dotted with seems to be wrecked, burned out hulks of old tractor trailer trucks <laughs> and belching furnaces that are belching noxious airs into the atmosphere. <laughs> Purple smoke rises to the horizon and you look down into the waters of the Raritan and you can see nothing but a long, slow-moving, gloopy, dark river of sludge moving into a larger body of sludge known as the Jersey Meadows where even the toads have to come up for air about every five minutes 
And, uh, <laughs> and, and this is one side of your you know, and, and you drive along there and with the right light and the, with the proper atmosphere in your head, with your mind working right, and you look out, you are on the moon. You really are. And the burnt, and, and, and the, the Jersey, the Jersey, uh, dumps over there. Yeah, doesn't that look good at twilight? And, uh, so this is one side of Jersey. And then, uh, then of course, uh, Jersey, Jersey can manage fantastic catastrophes. Like, uh, just during the summer, uh, Trenton. Now, it is not easy for a city to be flooded out. I mean, real floods. And simultaneously have a water shortage. Only in Jersey. <laughs> they did it. And uh, so we salute Trenton as being one of the most Jersey of all cities. Ah, yes, Trenton. Oh, Trenton. Oh, Trenton. Fester on the banks of the Delaware. Oh, Trenton. Trenton, the scene of the defeat of the Hessians. Oh, Trenton. Oh, historic Trenton. You're still defeating people. But uh, <laughs> so, so Jersey is an exciting state. And uh, we'd like to... Uh, I'd like to lay the Jersey Devil on you. If you don't know anything about the devil, okay, if, uh, this is uh, by way of uh, educational material for Jerseyites who are, say, Jersey come lately's and, uh, you know, really don't, don't know the great and historical legends of Jersey. So for those of you who don't know, I have the, uh, in, in capsule form, the Jersey legend itself. Now, first of all, it goes back almost to the beginnings of Jersey itself. This is not just a cockamamie story that was dreamed up by somebody one night who was working the Long John show. No way. This, this is a true legend. As a matter of fact, more than 200 years, Jerseyites have been seeing the Jersey Devil, especially on Saturday nights. And you know what Jerseyites do down at Alan Gracie's bar on Saturday night. But uh, nevertheless, it's uh, it's a it's a continuing legend, and the the actual origin of it is interesting. And according to legend, a witch at Leeds in Atlantic County, you know where Leeds Point is in Atlantic County, in 1735, and this was the heyday of the witches, in 1735 was overheard wishing that her 13th child would be a devil. Well, would you please give me a little of that sneaky devil music there? A shy, a shy and gentle imp was born to her one stormy night with cloven hoofs and a long tail, a kangaroo body, bat wings, the face of a horse, and the head of a dog. He took one look at his mother, flew up the chimney, and disappeared into the Pine Barrens. The Jersey Devil's loud shrieks were heard at night in the swamps for several years thereafter. This is the actual legend of the Jersey Devil. I am not making this up. In 1740, five years later, a clergyman roamed the pines with bell, book, and candle until he found the demon and put him to rest for 100 years. You know the legend of the bell, the book, and the candle, don't you? Yes. The creature was laid to rest for 100 years and was not heard from. And then suddenly, in 1840, the creature was seen again and became widely known. In 1906... When a newspaper said a farmer saw the Jersey Devil near his barn, hysteria spread quickly as more people in the Pineys and as far away as West Orange claimed to see the devil himself, or at least his tracks. Ah! Rewards were offered all throughout the state for the devil's capture in the year 1906. $100,000 was offered. Dead or alive. Another man put up $500 for the devil, which he said was a rare vampire. The rewards were never claimed, but many sightings were reported. In 
A Philadelphia publicist in 1906 charged gullible people money to catch a glimpse of the Jersey Devil that he claimed he captured. A small kangaroo painted green with a strapped-on pair of large wings. What a cockamamie. <laughs> a small kangaroo painted green. <laughs> I think I'd pay to see that anyway. <laughs> The legendary creature never violated a law, some say, yet a posse of armed farmers combed the swamps of Woodstown as recent as 1936. Oh yes, this is not the, this is not a thing that's passed, it's ongoing. Police in another town put up a sign to stop rumors and quiet the timid in 1951. The sign said, and we quote, there is no Jersey Devil here. You notice they didn't say there was no Jersey Devil. They said there's none here. <laughs> that is until they elected that uh, Republican mayor. And then, of course, everything changed. People of Dorothy, New Jersey. Dorothy, New Jersey, reported seeing, quote, his cloven hoof marks around town in 1960. And more recently, the devil was sighted near New Gretna and along a rural road in Passaic County. The Jersey Devil stalks. The Night Trail. Okay, now that's the story of the Jersey. I'm not making it up, friend. And, uh, no, this is very official. The Jersey Devil has been documented many times. And, uh, I am not taking sides in this controversy. I mean, I've crossed many, uh, Many a mean mother in my time, but I'm not going to cross the Jersey Devil, if such be. However, I have a, uh, I once, uh, was, uh, was, uh, witness to the description of the Jersey Devil on how it was actually sighted in 1936. This is the most famous sighting of all in 1936, which occurred in the Piney Barrens. Do you know anything about the Pine Barrens of Jersey? This is part of Jersey that most people don't know much about. It's over, it's over around in the area around Atlantic City. And it's just that. It's the Pine Barrens. And, uh, there's all kinds of interesting people live in that area. And, uh, they're called Pineys, as a matter of fact. Uh, and, and, uh, they say that in some instances, way back in the Pine Barrens, there are people living who are barely in the 16th century, much less the 20th. And uh, they they rarely come out, and they interbreed. Uh, there's one group of people who live on the Pine Barrens known as the Johnson Whites. Did you ever hear of them? Yes. Uh, they run to albinos and people with six fingers on the hand. And, uh, yes, it's a, it's a fascinating area. Little known, even among Jerseyites. And it's exactly what the term implies. Barren. Pine barrens. Small, stunted pine trees grow for mile on end on the sandy, barren soil. Uncut by roads in many areas. In fact, I've many times uh, flown over the piney barrens. One day I was, was, uh, was flying uh, at a low altitude, maybe... Oh, eight, nine hundred feet, which is a fairly low altitude. Low over the pine barrens, just, just, just digging that curious scene out there. And it is, it stretches for miles, mile upon mile, and it is in the pine barrens that many sightings of the devil have been seen. And for good reason, because the pine barrens, according to legend, was the birthplace of the devil. Now, no one knows, you know, this is just a theory. <laughs> well, I, I was coming along the gravel road, see? In my pickup truck. And I was driving uh, kind of northeast. About uh, 8 o'clock in the evening, just got dark. It was around about October. I was coming along about 8 o'clock in the evening, had, uh, had Harold with me. And we'd been out cutting wood, laying in some cordwood for the wintertime. We are coming along the road there in my Chevy pickup truck and uh, had a little trouble with, uh, with the carburetor jets before that. We'd gotten out and we'd worked on this thing, got it going again. We're driving along. 
and we're we're heading into the woods. See, we're going out going out towards the Samuels house. We're driving along there when all of a sudden out of the darkness I see coming ahead of me, I, I couldn't believe what I seen because you don't see many cars out there along. And all of a sudden I see coming at me, right at me, this this uh, this thing's coming down the road with two lights. Two real bright lights, real close together. They just like eyes are coming close together right at me. And they're coming on the road and Harold says, What's that? Is that a car coming this way? And I said, There can't be no car because this is one lane thing here and there's no, nobody coming this way. And, and, and there's only one long house on the end of the street and it's, it's, it's Samuel's house. They ain't got no car. Can't be no car. Well, at that point, this thing come closer and closer and it seemed to be rising up and down, rising, rising. As it rises, I see this, what looks like a, a kind of a flame coming out around them two eyes coming at me like that. Well, we're getting closer and closer, and all of a sudden I hear this thing give out this sound. <laughs> well, I got so scared, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. This thing is screaming and yelling, it's coming right at me. I said to Harold, Harold, my God, we're going to get out of here. And at that point, Harold just, Harold hung his head out the window, and he says, where's it going? I can see it's going in the woods there. And all of a sudden I see them lights again, it turned, it looked right at me, and it goes, <laughs> And it's blowing smoke and flame like that, and I drove the car right into that, that tree down there, and I smashed my car all up. I tell you, me and Harold just sat there for about 15 minutes afterwards. Couldn't tell what we seen. I'll tell you, if that wasn't a Jersey Devil, that was sure was something, something mean bad. And for half an hour afterwards, you could smell this smell like burning in the air. The Jersey Devil, I guess. Yeah. How'd you like that, huh? Well, that is uh, is the way the Jersey Devil, the Jersey Devil, was sighted in 1936. Now. They did find this guy's car all wrecked, and the two of them were just absolutely flipped out, these two guys. And uh, they were known as very sober, solid, industrious citizens of the area. Oh, yes. This was not after a Saturday night at uh, Fat Mary's. No, no. These guys were just coming home from uh, doing some work, and they ran into this scene. And there were actual evidences that they had seen something. They really had. And for weeks after that, uh, people combed the area. And uh, there were all kinds of reports that things were seen. Uh, just half seen in the darkness, something moving and then disappearing. And the Jersey Devil reappears at odd intervals. Uh, like every 15, 20 years, uh, suddenly it will be reported and seen. And some guy will flip. He sees this wild thing. And it's always the same. The descriptions... Going all the way back to the to the uh, 18th century, the description of the, of the Jersey Devil has remained consistent. And even the people who report it, who have not even heard of the legend, uh, somehow describe it pretty much the same as it's always been described. It seems to have eyes that glow. <laughs> this is the description, invariably. It seems to have uh, some kind of wing or appendage that is attached to it. And it is large. And uh, after it weaves, it leaves behind a curious smell of something having been burning. And this has been uh, reported at 20 to 25 year intervals. At great uh, sudden leaps in time. And just two nights ago, the Jersey Devil was again reported in the Piney Barrens. And who was it reported by? Well, you know, you'd always say, well, it's always reported by some totally uh, uh, off-the-wall sign painter or something, you know, who's been uh, down at Fat Mary's. But this was a school teacher. <laughs> and incidentally, who was not familiar with the Jersey Devil legend. He had just moved in from Kansas and was teaching school in the area. When the same thing happened, according to his description, I quote, well, I was just driving along this gravel road, 
taking a shortcut through the Pineys. I've been working late at school, having a thing with the PTA. Lord I'm driving Marie. along in my Pinto, when all of a sudden I see coming along the road directly at me on this one-lane gravel road. I couldn't believe it. There's a car coming right at me. He's coming faster and faster, but the headlights are set so close together, it didn't look like a car. And then all of a sudden, without any warning, this thing leaves out a shriek. It just goes, ah! Ah! That's the most recent description of a sighting of the Jersey Devil. Now, some say it is the Mafia. Uh, others say it's just a union organizer from Secaucus out to... Throw a little scare in the troops. And it's always described the same. I mean, so you see, Jersey, Jersey itself, uh, as a state, is probably the most uh, American of all states. Possessed of devils. Possessed of Route 22. The alimentary canal of the nation. New Jersey is a, is a state of incredible vitality. Have you ever seen the Jersey State flag? Uh, it's rampant, and it's a state flag that flies proudly over motels and service stations. <laughs> Which, incidentally, is, uh, is the uh, natural business of Jerseyites, running motels, bars, and Carvel joints. And so, Jersey, we salute thee tonight. Possessed of devils, hounded by... A consistent sense of having just missed out on history. You know, the Jersey was one of the strongholds of anti-revolutionary people during the Revolutionary War. Jersey has consistently been a little out of step, missing many major beats of its time. Yes, thousands of Jerseyites gave the uh, Washington and his troops a hard time when they went through certain areas of Jersey. Why? Well, they're from Jersey. <laughs> There's no other reason. Oh, Jersey, we salute thee. Oh, Jersey, sovereign state. Oh, Jersey, magnificent empire. Magnificent home of the natural slob. Oh, Jersey. 